Okay, everybody. Welcome back. Thanks for staying for the afternoon session. Um, so I, I, I've just learned from several people that it's really cold in here. So I'm sorry about that. But if you can just um, I, breathe a little heavier. That's all I can say. <laughs> um, I'd like to uh, welcome and thank Gada Amer for being here. And she will be our next speaker. And she'll be followed by Matthew Ritchie. So uh, please welcome Gada Amer. Hi, so my name is Gada Amer, and I, uh, I'm going to uh, make a small presentation. And the way I'm doing uh, this presentation is uh, uh, I am, uh, I'm showing uh, different parts of my work because I am mainly famous uh, for being a painter, but I do many other um, things like sculpture and uh, gardens and uh, video and the ceramics, so I, uh, I'm not going to show any videos or ceramics here. I'm just going to go through like um, uh, some parts of my work that are a little bit more relevant or, or to the show. I thought it was more relevant or just uh, so. Uh, but it doesn't mean that I do, I, I, it's not a chronological uh, order. So it's just by, um, by, by medium. So I'm going to show you the painting, the drawings, my collaboration with Reza Farconde and how it started. Uh, and then uh, there is my sculpture and then my gardens. So uh, first of all, my painting. And I'm going to tell you um, how I started to make these paintings or why I started to make this painting and why I, I chose the, the medium of embroidery. Uh, well, I, am, I grew up in Egypt uh, until I was 11. And then uh, I, uh, my, my family relocated in France, in the south of France, in Nice, in 1974. And, um, um, and then I was, it was like, um, and then I grew up in France, and then I went to art school in France. And all, all the time I was thinking, when I was in France, because I'm Arab and Muslim's origin, I was thinking that, um, that all the, like we are more retarded, and then the, the West is like this, uh, very open and liberal and free world until I went to art school in France. <laughs> and then I wanted to, 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 to become a painter and my painting teacher uh, refused to, to teach women uh, to paint. We were not allowed to go to the, 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 to take his class. And I was very shocked. And uh, as you can imagine, because, <laughs> because I was very disappointed. I was like, okay, then you, you too, you are uh, from this kind of thought that women are not capable. And I was very upset. And then I realized, and then he would say, make this, okay, women like here, you don't go to my class. Men, you go to my class. And then if the woman, if any of the women wants to, to, to learn something, they, they have to wait next to the fish pond. And they, when the men come out of the class, we ask them the question. I thought it was so demeaning, I didn't want to wait, so I left and I went to the library and I was looking into, through art books to see, uh, I said like, so there is no woman um, artist in the, in the painting? I, I didn't even realize that there was no woman artist. And this is when I realized, so I looked at all the books in the library to, found, to find out that there was very little, um, there was almost none in France, 1988, so, uh, 1986, it was, um, and, then, uh, I, uh, and then I decided that uh, uh, painting is a male uh, uh, practice. And I, uh, after I, uh, um, of course I was not, I didn't never, he failed uh, all my painting classes, and then I didn't even do uh, embroidery when I was at school. I, I went to drawings. And then I refused to paint uh, in, from this moment. And I wanted to, uh, to embroider and to create a medium that would imitate painting to just so that each time I am painting, I'm t saying this story that women, uh, that we have not invented this medium or we, ha we were not part of this medium as a recognized people. So this is exactly what I did, and 
My research in painting throughout the, the, on my career until now is to paint with embroidery and to mix both um, so that it's, this is my, uh, my painting um, research. So I've been trying to do this for, um, uh, for uh, since uh, 1991. And my first, uh, actually, sorry, I, I went too fast. My first painting was this one. It's called Five Women at Work, uh, 1991. And it shows a quadriptic of four women uh, in, their, uh, in their daily life routine. And the fifth woman is me, the painter, who is embroidering them. So this was my... Uh, and then I went uh, around until 1993 to make um, um, like women at home and like uh, uh, submissive women. And then I was, I, I, I couldn't paint still. It was only just drawing. So I got the idea to, to take uh, uh, the, um, the image from pornographic magazine or erotic magazines. So I could show a double submission and then I could repeat the figure and by uh, leaving, uh, letting over the thread, this thread can imitate the, um, the, the drips. So all of this came uh, very gradually uh, as I am uh, manipulating my own te technique. It was not something that uh, uh, conceptually I had, um, I had created. I had to do a lot of tests and I think only in, um, in 2010 that I can say that I started to understand how to really paint with embroidery. So I want to show you how I start. So I make my uh, drawing first. It's like this is because a lot of people ask me how do I do the, my, my painting. And then I have an uh, assistant or myself, we embroider them like this, like in a loom. And then it is stretched and then uh, glued with the gel medium. Uh, so this is, and then uh, regarding, I use a, as well a lot of text. The text has been present in my work since uh, the beginning, since 1992. So, uh, um, because some people think that I just recently used text, but uh, I uh, am very um, um, at ease with text and image. I don't think that there is a big difference for me. Maybe it's because of my origin, I don't know, because the use of text is, is so part of my uh, growing up. So, and then there are some paintings that will have been signed RFGA, like the one that you have uh, um, in uh, the show. Uh, so RFGA stands for Reza Farconde and Gada Amer, and this is a, a, like a story that I, I fell into by chance. Uh, it's a, it's an, art, an, an artist from Iran that I met in art school in 1988. Um, and uh, we, are, we have both different practice, and we still do. But, uh, and we met in, in 1988, there was very little artists from the Middle East, and I never even considered myself from the Middle East. It's, it's here, or like they always say, oh, you're from the Middle East, you are from, I'm so like, okay, yes, I'm from the Middle East, but I don't feel that I ha I, there is a difference between Middle East and not Middle East, because I am, I, I, my art history upbringing is really in the Western world. And when I met Reza in uh, art school, there was no Middle Eastern or any other people. And then we, we were like very um, interested in each other because we were thinking, because really the, the, it, there was a big difference between um, what the others, which are the, the West, like the, uh, 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 see what is art and what we see what is art. So we had a, a lot of debates uh, about this because they didn't consider calligraphy as art, they didn't, so, and then until the show of Jean-Hubert Martin, Les Magiciens de la Terre, where, uh, in 1989, where he showed like uh, African artist with uh, Oceanographic, with Picasso, and then, uh, and for which he got fired, by the way. So, at, at the time. It was a very big debate uh, in France, and then, then started in the 2000, like all of the, the periphery and the center, and then all of that. So this is how I met Reza, and then we had, oh, and then in 2000, Reza, uh, I, I, we, we shared always studio, and then we moved together in the U.S. And then one time I was traveling, and then um, I came to the, my studio, and um, I know he had decided that he was very depressed, and he decided that uh, he doesn't want to paint anymore, and he put away all his canvas. He doesn't want to become an artist, and he's and and the painting depresses him, and this is why he's depressed. Okay, then one time I came, I came back to my studio and all my painting, all my canvas were painted. 
And I told him, oh, now you want to paint? You want my uh, canvas? And he said, no, this is not art. I want to help you because all of your background are horrible. And then he <laughs> and I was like, OK. And then he was kind of right. So, And then they were very beautiful. <laughs> Well, they were very beautiful, and I, I, he told me, you know what, if you don't want them, I can paint them white. I said, no, no, it's, uh, I was a little bit shocked, but in, intrigued as well. And then I started to paint on this uh, um, background first. And then after like two years, I was telling him, you know, I think that we are collaborating. And then he was like, no way, they're not collaborating, I'm not doing art, this is not art, I'm not painting. <laughs> And then I was upset, and then I said, no, but these are collaboration. And then he said, no. And then I invented the acronym RFGA because I, I knew that we were going in, an, in a direction that was very weird for me, and then that is this, this going back and forth, working on the same canvas together was very interesting, and I wanted to keep a trace of this. So I invented an acronym to sign on his behalf, and he was very upset this, about this acronym. And then I, I, I told him, anyway, nobody will ask. And it's true, nobody has ever asked what was RFGA. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we continued to do all of this RFGA in parallel to my own work. And, and then he, and then in, in 2005, uh, so. In 2005, he, dis he, he, he decided that it's true that he's, he's doing art, and it's, it's not because of, of the, uh, he was the, the, like painting doesn't make him depressed. He's depressed because of other things, and then he got <laughs> he had to take medication. He's fine now, but and then he's back to work, and then he decided that what he was doing was art kind was art. Okay, fine, he can sign with me, but was very late to sign the RFDA because it was five years that we were doing this, so we decided to sign together on a whole new, new body of work, which was drawings. So we've been doing this, like, so now the, the, the collaboration has become official, and then we are, uh, we have left the RFDA to confuse, to even confuse more people, and, <laughs> and we, we, uh, we are, we are doing the, those uh, uh, drawings together because, because it's not that we, we wanted to do this, it's because it happened like this. We, we never talk when we make these drawings. So we know how to collaborate or we have made a, a collaboration that uh, is working. We, 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 don't, we didn't say, oh, we are great two artists and then let's collaborate. This is not what has happened. So we are continuing the same practice in drawing, the same than the RFGA, where like uh, I he, he starts and then uh, I uh, then I start uh, uh, then I continue or I start then he continues um, a little bit in, in freedom. We don't say and we have to be hundred percent together to to sign this. If one doesn't like it, we cannot sign. It's, um, and then it has if, like the way we work is as well like everybody saying yes yes you are doing the. The, the erotic images, and he's doing the flowers. It's true that it started like this, but then um, more and more we are we are uh, sometimes uh, working together uh, on the on the same uh, drawings. Like uh, sometimes we are working separately, and sometimes we are working like this. Uh, and sometimes I take his his uh, flowers and paint them. And he takes my <laughs> woman and paints them. So it's very, uh, it's like we put all of our sketches together and we do whatever we want when we collaborate. Like uh, it's free, uh, it belongs to both of us. Uh, now my sculpture, so we'll have time. Okay. Uh, so I've been as well doing sculpture uh, but, uh, since uh, I started, but uh, the shift came uh, in 2010 when I started to make sculpture that has, uh, is not related to embroidery. So my first sculpture was, uh, this is, is in 1993, it's Beauty Tips of the month of August, and then I embroidered four uh, handkerchiefs where there is a, a, a beauty tip because every month of August in the, you always have the same beauty tip, your, your uh, nails, your legs. So, uh, so these are the beauty tips. Then I did, um, uh, I embroidered the Sleeping Beauty on this uh, dress. Uh, and it's uh, the story that is very interesting because uh, the woman has no, doesn't do anything, she just sleeps. I found it a little bit fascinating. So I uh, embroidered her, and then I made a performance where I wear this dress, uh, the same dress, but in red without embroidery, and then I put it in this chair. So this was the... Then uh, in 2001, I made this... Uh, uh, it's 
this Encyclopedia of Pleasure, uh, which was uh, my, uh, my sister who is a scholar. Uh, she was uh, looking f for this book called Encyclopedia of Pleasure, and she would like, she, we always talk and then about her research and my research. And then she was telling me about this book that is uh, an encyclopedia of pleasure that was uh, done in the Middle Ages, and it starts like this, in the name of, uh, uh, of Allah, I'm going to show you how to be a, a good Muslim. And in order to be a good Muslim, you have to be a good human being, and in order to be a good human being, you have to be a good sexual being. And I'm going to teach you how to go be a good sexual being. And here is a, a book about uh, sexuality that is, uh, has been forbidden in the 50s. Uh, it's, uh, f um, and then she was sure that she can find this book. So she went on and on. And then she did find a translation of the book in Canada. And then she uh, brought it to America. And then she gave me a copy. Because it, it was, it's very fascinating. I wanted to read what was written as a Muslim um, in, uh, about the sexuality. And I embroidered the part that, uh, 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 that was speaking about uh, woman sexuality. You have to know that this book was um, a commission. So you have all of these people who want to do good. So they commissioned writer to write about this and about that. And, and this book is one of the most fascinating book that, uh, uh, thank God, uh, my sister found. Uh, and then she even found the manuscript later. But, uh, and I chose to embroider on um, on boxes, like when you. Uh, because culture has always been saved by the other one. Like, uh, that's why I wanted boxes. Like, for example, in the, uh, the Muslim has saved the, West, the Western culture in the Middle Ages. And right now, the Western are saving the, the Islamic culture by, by saving the books. We found it in Canada. So I, the, 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 um, this relationship between two cultures, uh, that one time one is very uh, liberal and the other one is very uh, like uh, not liberal. So the, that's why I chose to embroider on boxes B while traveling is a very important thing and, uh, for, for a human being or for culture in general. And this is uh, Salon Courbet. I met this uh, uh, sculpture when I, uh, during the Bush era. When we, about terrorism, terrorism, I was really sick of hearing the word terrorism that after a while had no meaning, apart from being from the Middle East, it's terrorism. So I um, uh, made this research where I wanted to find where does this word come from in Arabic and in English. So I um, um, found a lot of, I was very surprised to find out that this uh, terrorism before Robespierre, before the French Revolution didn't even exist. And it, this is, it started with the, the, the French Revolution, the word terrorism. Um, and then, then it was like in all the dictionary until it ended up until uh, the definition of two planes crushing a tower. And then in Arabic, it was a very bad translation of the word terrorism. So only one translation from uh, one, of the, um, one of the 70s definition, which I took. And, and so uh, on, the, on the rug and on the, on the couches, it's in Arabic. And on the walls, I don't know if you can see, uh, so the definition of the, of the word tourism in the dictionary in English. So my idea was like, if you don't understand the two languages, you will never understand what does it mean. And this is another sculpture that I made in 2010, 100 Words of Love. And uh, as, well, as, as well, some of my sister research, where she found out that in Arabic, we have 100 words to say love. And I really like this idea. So I took them and I created this sculpture um, in Arabic. So, uh, so, to, so that for the Muslim people to use it. So this is the scale. And my boots, they match. <laughs> and then later on, I developed a whole series of sculptures. This is one of them. Uh, that, uh, uh, that it was really, my, the 100 words of us was really one of the beginning of, uh, for this sculpture um, in bronze. And then I continue uh, with my bronzes uh, as well. This is the, OK, my gardens are the least known, uh, maybe, I don't know. Um, of my uh, practice. This is a, my first garden was in 1997, and this is a cactus painting, I call it. 
uh, as well it's a critique of the painters uh, like of, of the Albers, Joseph Albers of the abstract where there is no woman and this vision, Cartesian vision of painting. This uh, painting, this, this is 1997 and right now I have redone this uh, painting indoors at the museum. Uh, I, I uh, forgot to put some picture, I'm sorry. Um, this is Love Park, and then I Site Santa Fe. I transformed this uh, area, abandoned area, uh, into a, um, a love park where I put 10 benches and I sliced them into two halves. And on, in each half, there is a, a, a quotation uh, regarding love and life that are contradictory. So you, 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 uh, so you this is my love park. And this is um, in Busan. Korea, uh, in front of the museum, and I, I, um, I, I asked people to tell me what are the women's quality, and I, I wrote them in Korean uh, with this plant that blooms once a year. Um, so, so I, I took, I made like a research with like a um, survey, and I asked men and women outside the museum to tell me a woman's quality, and I took the ones that that people um, say the most. And I, I cheated in this one because nobody say intelligent, so I put it though because I. Feel like, <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> so there is like having existing uh, uh, eyelashes, serving well the food, submissive, rich. I was like very. So this is about, and then I put intelligent. But this is another uh, uh, garden, one of my garden in Spain, and it's uh, it's actually uh, sand the boxes for children, and it says, it has a quotation that uh, is very alarming. Today, 70% of the poor in the world are women. So I put this in this uh, Rambla, Rambla de Raval, where the government has wanted to make a Rambla to control, because there was, it's an area where there, there was a lot of prostitution. So the police uh, created these Ramblas, and then so I wanted the women with their children when they come to, to the park to, to, to play with this and just, and this is love, love uh, garden, peace garden, and I uh, made it as well. It's the same, uh, the, the same day that uh, America bombarded Iraq, uh, 2005, and uh, I made a, a bend the bomb and a peace and love sign uh, made out of carnivorous, carnivorous plants, and I made a cocktail party and I invited people uh, to fee, to uh, the cocktail was. Uh, live worms and crickets, and they, people had to feed the plants. <laughs> so, and this piece is, was in Panama, and it's the piece that, this piece has been confiscated uh, <laughs> from me. Uh, it was uh, uh, to, to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the Panama, um, uh, liber like uh, Panama, Liberation, and they invited lots of artists to make um, works in the in the city, and I was one of them. And I chose to work with bus painters. They have the bus painters that are not recognized. They are like you go you go there. I love them. They, you go there with all the photo of the things you want to paint, and they they would paint your bus, your car, um, and it was they were not considered artists. So I uh, um, uh, it, they were great people. I really enjoyed the, how, they, how it, this relationship and how, why they are not considered artists, you know. So I uh, decided to, commission, uh, to work with six of them and to, com to commission. Uh, I didn't want to make a piece like today 70% of the, like so obvious like this. I wanted to make a critique of the society and the, the city uh, through these uh, quotes. But I didn't, I actually it's called Six Chinese Proverbs. It's through Chinese Proverbs because I said, okay, what is the very different uh, culture from Panama? Ah, it's China in my head. Huh? And it's, <laughs> so I took Chinese proverb, I, I, and then I was sure that in this Chinese proverb, it will speak internationally. And then, so I, I gave to the bus painter those proverbs, and I told them where exactly in the city I wanted to, to place them. And... Uh, in my head, I didn't know exactly what they were going to paint because it, this is how you do, like you bring this and you bring that, but I thought they were going to paint just letters. 
And I was very surprised that they, they really painted their interpretation and their anger about the society. And this piece really is one of my favorite pieces because it has a little bit like uh, um, surprised me. Uh, from all my pieces I did. So this is in front of, so, uh, and, and this piece it lasted one hour because they were confiscated, I've never seen them. So it's a very painful story for me. Uh, so here it's in front of the IRS audit and it says, for the love of money, truth will fall silent. First, <laughs> this is in front of the Panama, uh, uh, in Panama administration, and it says uh, occupy the higher ground to exercise control. And then in front of McDonald, eat less, taste more. <laughs> and in front, of, in front of the people where the, all of the politicians live, it says what you see is real, what you hear may not be. <laughs> anyway, so uh, this is another piece. It's happily ever after, and I, uh, this is my only permanent uh, garden. And then you can say, see it because it's very well tended, and it's because garden is are very important when they are like people who can take care of them. You cannot just make a garden and leave. Um, I met other gardens, but they are not uh, like with flowers. So this is the word happily ever after, made out of jasmine flowers, so when it blooms like this. And uh, uh, it's a little bit of a <laughs> critique of a couple, because uh, for me, the idea was to make a garden where you can take photograph. But when you are inside, because there is a, a bench in, uh, in, in the middle, you can never take happily ever after. It's either happy or ever or after. So. <laughs> and and we have a lot of jasmine, and I like the idea as, as well that there is bees. There's a lot of bees coming, so there, there's a lot of. Uh... <laughs> and this was a, um, a garden that I did in the, the Smithsonian, where I have uh, planted the word hunger with rice. That's it. Oh.